There is a celebration about cricket coming back to Pakistan. We are now seven tests in, and you can see it the way that the Australians have been treated by the fans, the press, the crowd. Everyone is just so excited to have them there. And possibly the best way to show you this is that Melinda Farrell was on the front page of the Tribune. It is not normal to have a cricket journalist on the front page of a newspaper, not even like with a sex scandal. We're just not that famous, even Mel. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. I mean, even Manus Lebeshain's grub went viral, right? That's the kind of test series this has been. Partly that is because almost no one expected the Australians to actually turn up, especially after what happened with New Zealand and England. So it's even more of a celebration than almost any series is when it's being played in Pakistan these days. With Australia, specifically the team who first stopped going to Pakistan, going back, it just makes test cricket feel more whole again complete and so much so that even during the first test people were still talking it up right even though it was one of the most tedious matches that we have had in a very long time and even then people still liked it because it was a major match in pakistan and the same thing happened in the second test right obviously this was a lot better draw far more exciting australia batted for two days which is not as exciting but usman khawaja making runs in pakistan was a pretty big deal plus most people like watching usman khawaja make runs anyway then Pakistan were bowled out for 148, although bowled out is probably not the right term because they had two run outs in that, which is fun on its own. Australia then gave their bowlers a session off. Baba Azan comes in, plays an all-time great innings, and Nathan Lyon makes it exciting enough that we still got that, you know, fifth day buzz at the end. There's no doubt that there's two kinds of draws. There's draws and there's draws. And there is a critical stat here. This was the fifth most overs ever bowled in the fourth inning. And it's important to note what an outlier this result was. Batting this long to draw a test match is just not a thing that has happened very often ever in the history of test cricket. There are still people who think Australia were wrong not to enforce the follow-on, but only one time in the history of our game has the team batted more overs in the fourth innings of a match and managed to draw. This was a fluke result in many ways, inspired by a great Pakistan performance and a friendly pitch. And it's also worth mentioning that Nathan Lyon is not a great fourth innings bowler, as I've done videos about before. So all of this coming together made this an incredible event. But if we were going to have two draws in a row anywhere, Pakistan is the place that makes the most sense. Because cricket has completely changed since Pakistan last played at home. From 2000 until the beginning of 2010, draws were common. It was a great batting period, everyone was making runs, and we had a lot of dead tests. Not that all draws mean that it's a dead test, but it was undoubtedly a less entertaining era of cricket than we have now. And it feels weird to look back and remember that a quarter of a matches were draws back then. In fact, the West Indies had almost 40% of their tests drawn in that period. They had some incredibly tedious surfaces where Shivnarayan Chandrapal would dig himself in for a day and a half and just not go anywhere. India were not far behind either, with just pristine batting surfaces that often just didn't break up as much as everyone would hope. And both New Zealand and Pakistan were over 30% of draws as well. Those four nations were very draw happy at that point, but that wasn't really the trend. In 1980, over 50% of tests were drawn that year. Since the year 2000, we've only had three years with over 30% of draws. So by the change of century, it was clear that draws were on their way out. So West Indies, India, New Zealand and Pakistan were holdouts at that point. They were keeping the draws alive, if you will. But the game clearly changed in the 90s and the idea was to get a result wherever possible and that did trickle down to most teams. And so the generation after Pakistan stopped playing at home, there was a nine year period where there were certainly less draws, heading down from nearly a quarter of all tests to a fifth. But by decade doesn't really give it its true justice because it's since 2015 where the whole thing just went a little bit crazy. But let's just have a look at everything since World War II. The 50s were pretty dire when it comes to tests, and so you can understand why there was extra draws there. In the 60s, test cricket is starting to warm up again. But you can also see that the variance here from year to year, that's also because of how few tests were played in those days. By the 80s, we have more matches, and you can see it starting to level out at a very high draw level. But in the late 90s, it starts to drop. And then in the 2000s, it continues to be low. And then after 2010, it drops again, and drops, and drops. And then by the peak of the pace pandemic, only 10% of tests draw. It's had a slight bounce back since, but this is still low, historically low. And that is the period of test cricket that Pakistan has re-entered. And yet they have three draws at home since coming back. Put it this way, England has had five, but in 19 tests. 
Pakistan has played seven tests and had three draws. And when you look at the percentages, this is what you see. Pakistan has managed to have a massive amount of draws and what is a fairly small sample size at this stage. Just seeing three draws in seven matches feels like it comes from another era altogether. Hey kiddies, this is how cricket was played before you followed it on Twitter or streamed it. It's like in going back to Pakistan to play test, we're stuck in some kind of time warp and the pitches have not developed at all. They just paused the game and we still have cricket on genuine 2009 wickets. Like, is it possible that the curators completely skipped the pace pandemic and are just rolling the hell out of it without watching any modern cricket? I'd like to hope they are. So Pakistan has brought the draw back and usually that would be enough to upset everyone. People don't even seem to really understand draws anymore, there are so few. But because cricket is so happy to have Pakistan back at home, they're getting a better run of it. Despite the fact that they are producing epically turgid surfaces. Pakistan Test Cricket is back. Back in 2009.